Bobby, first question right off the bat as a huge fan. How does it feel being part of the greatest horror franchise ever made? Wow, that's a that's a that's a hefty uh, tag you just gave there. Thank you for that. Um, yeah, it's it's a, in a lot of ways it's an honor, man. You know, because like uh, it's a, I remember going to see that movie when I was in high school, well before I ever started acting. I saw the first one, seeing like Devin Sawa, and you're like, don't go up the stairs, and like run away from the thing. But then to be a part of it after the fact is like, and and, and I, I mean, even going to go film that thing, I we we went to New Orleans. I, I it was an audition on a Wednesday, callback yes. Thursday, Friday book, Monday I was gone. So it was it, I, it was during a writer strike. I mean, like it just happened like that. So um, I did not realize what I was walking into until I got there and realized it was, I was the lead of like I don't know, like fifty million, sixty million dollar movie. I thought it was like a just the end of the franchise kind of thing. I didn't realize we were walking into like the rebirth of the franchise in a way. You know, bringing three D into it and bringing all that stuff into it. It was, it was pretty sure? exceptional. And, I'm, a lot of people at the time they weren't even. Filming back to LA, I mean, like it was dead. The writer strike was happening. We just came off of another strike, so they're trying to figure all this stuff out. So I walked back into town. A lot of the people that I was friends with, or like my my family, were like, "Why don't you just come hang for until the thing's over?" I was like, "No, no, no, I want to go back." And so I just happened to go back into. It was like February, so I came back from Christmas. Uh, and I just like stayed for a while, and where I'm from, I came back and booked that thing within 10, 15 days. I was back out of there doing this one real quick. Do you remember watching that first film? What impact did it have on you? <laughs> well, I mean, it probably was not the best answer for what you're looking for, but <laughs> I just remember I was with I was with a new guy that just came to school, and so he's like one of my buddies, one of my good buddies, this guy Reed Rudge, and he was like one of the guys on the football team and stuff. But he had just joined school, and he was a crazy bastard, and he is screaming in this theater, and so we had just a great time watching it, you know, like it was. It, it, that's what I love about these movies is that there's an escape to it, and there's a there's a, an opportunity to experience a version of reality that like hopefully you never actually have to physically experience but you still get to have the physiological or the emotional response you just but you're in a safe environment well, that's what's beautiful about movies you know why, all genres why are we so attracted to horror well um you get to experience something that, that uh, uh, there's a there's an aspect of fear. I think we're fascinated by it. I don't think we're challenged uh, at all in this society. Not not in the way that we had. If you think about back to before societies were formed or as they were starting to form. You, know, you had bears. You had lightning. You had the tree catching on fire from the lightning. You were hiding in a cave. You were trying to figure out what's going on. So then we started to try to create answers to what is happening around us. Where did we come from? What is, what is going on? And, and you know, we started to anthropomorphize things. So that's where like religions came out of that. Different things grew out of. Desire to answer if what is happening. I think. I think that fear. Wow, it's such an interesting thing. We we are obsessed with fear in this culture. And you can tell by the the stuff that we watch. You can tell by the way the news is run. You can tell by the way that like we desire danger. You know, and so that's why I think we're, in so many ways we're as a culture they're they're waiting for someone to come bring them that danger. You know, like if someone shows them the inkling, the smallest, like like this little bit, you could be in trouble. You're obsessed. Your brain just goes, oh, flight or flight kicks in. You, I mean, you literally call back to like an ancient part of your of your of how you're designed to to function. Like, is this good for me? Is this bad for me? Pattern recognition starts to firing off. So I, I think it's something that's it's innately in us that that we grow from. You know, because I, I think that that we're here, uh, like in a soul sense, we're here to experience the contrast of what is love and, and joy. You know, like the sleep of the soul in the universe in that way. It's like it's like it's a it's a continuum of endless love and joy. And love is not all like frou frou. Like it, it, there's there's challenge and support. It's both sides of it. So so I think that the fear provides that contrast, just so you know how rich your your loved ones' uh, experiences make or feel for you, or or to to really understand like the embrace of a lover or you know a, a family member that you're you know a grandmother or whoever I mean to be able to have those experiences it's nice to have the contrast just to know how rich that is so I think that's I think fear is a, such a necessary part of of our growth as a, as a, as a person as a species whatever it is how, how, the, now, how um, the fact that the killer in Final Destination is death, yeah. Is death itself and never well, he's the star of this movie. <laughs> the star of the film. And it's almost like people are fated to be to be destroyed. Do you feel that we sometimes are fated uh, to our own destruction? Well I that's interesting. It's it's that's a that's a big question. 
there's fate that's, that's obviously like you know writers love like about writing about fate. Um, I think that fate is what you make it. You, you're the captain of your own ship to the, to the degree that you desire to be. The rest of it is unconscious, but it's all still coming from your own mind. It's your own thoughts. I mean, you think about it, we have 60,000 thoughts a day, about 50,000 of them on average are negative. So people have a hard time in, in, in their lives, or they experience something in their lives. And I, I don't want this to sound judgmental or preachy, but, but I definitely think that there's a, a responsibility that's been taken away. Uh, some of it by choice, because most people don't want to deal with the, the reality that they're actually in charge, in charge of their entire life. They want somebody else that might know more. Or, but nobody really knows more about your situation than, than you, right? So, like, I believe that fate is as a matter of what you are consistently thinking, what you're consistently doing, whatever your habitual patterns are. That's going to determine your experience. You know, like, you, know, you think about it from from that's sort of like a Nietzsche kind of idea. But like, you go up to the fourth dimension and you're looking down on, the, on our dimension, and it's just a flat circle that we're walking around on. You know what I mean? Like, it's just we're always destined to interact with the same cycle, the same process. There's going to be a version of it that'll change because. It, it, like the energy will change into a new form, you know, in, in some way or another. Uh, and this this might be kind of weird, but from a quantum perspective, you're a relative of mine. You're you're the sun that I haven't had yet. You're the you know what I mean? Like you're all these sort of things that are happening for the now, and then it'll change to something later. You'll rep you'll be represented by a different trait. A different human being will show up to represent whatever trait you're representing now. And same for me to you. You know, it's it's a it's an interesting way of looking at life. But we're always on a cycle that is here. I think to teach to for growth is to teach us that life lesson that's consistently just like that one lesson that we're here to figure out you know would you say that the thing that scares you the most is that loss of control that loss of power I, I think that I think that uh, oh, the, well the, the only the only real control that you have is over what you're thinking you know um, so that's the only real if you lose control of that that's probably the most terrifying thing that because if your mind starts running wild and you start reacting to everything that happens like that can be very terrifying you know so I think the only real form of control that we all have is what we're thinking about you know like what, and so that that sort of determines what we're what we're aiming at what, we're, what our end goal will be what we're attracted towards and if we're moving towards that or away from it you know, it's all determined by thinking like final destination is considered like well, well, are not like to me and to a lot of people an iconic movie Thanks, man. In your opinion, like, what do you think that Final Destination brought, unique wise? You know that it brought that no other movie brought to the to, to like the the whole fear factor. Well, I, I think that they brought a different a, a different way of suspense than all. Think about like Michael Myers or you know Friday the Thirteenth or something. You know what the killer is. You know what I mean? Like you, you know who he is. As long as you're not up the stairs, you're not, you're not you're like by the lake. You're okay. You know what I mean? Like just don't go to the lake. Don't go to the campground. You'll be all right. But the thing about about this is, is that death has no boundaries. It has no limits. It is everywhere. It's just pervading and existing everywhere. So it could take on any different form. So the suspense is that's what's interesting about it. It's like the marble that like you know fell off. And somebody kicked it by. Like that's what makes it interesting. Because suspense is everything. You know, like it's it's designed with the pole could fall and like start a chain of event or a chain of a reaction that causes poor Leanne Vamp to get her head chopped off. And, you know, I would hate that. That would be awful. She's so gorgeous. But <laughs> but that's that's what I think is interesting about it is that you know, it's it. it it doesn't take, it's not isolated to one thing, it's, it, it makes it everywhere. Everything is, is dangerous. And the audience, awesome. and the audience, do you 